A.C. Van Ost and Tim O'Brien, uh, leadership of the Libertarian Party of Michigan here tonight.
why Johnny can't read the truth about guns. It was another uh, terrific program. It was uh, very timely, and hopefully, you know, we uh, enlightened a lot of people uh, to exactly what's going on in our public schools and the atrocity of uh, the way they uh, rush over the Second Amendment. From there, the uh, CCW legislation in Lansing was really starting to heat up, and Brassroots was on top of it again. We held a series of informational meetings. Utica, Grand Rapids, Southfield, Oxford, Taylor, Lapeer, Grayling, Morris, Lincoln Park, all had grassroots representatives there to inform people of the details of this legislation, provide them with information that they could take with them to tell their friends and families about explaining what was really going on there. Another um, terrific effort. Uh, nobody puts it together the way we do and presents it and gets it into people's hands like grassroots.
very well received and people uh, were willing to support that effort. It was very nice to see that people understood and appreciated uh, the fact that we were trying to you know, alert people to the United Nations role in global gun control. <coughs> the UP chapter of grassroots sets the standard across the state in a way that is still almost unimaginable to me. Please show your enthusiasm for the group that turned six county gun boards to issue a general permits in the Upper Peninsula.
Mason, Michigan wrote us, Gentlemen, I am a 73-year-old widow of two World War II veterans, and I am a member of the DAR, Daughters of the American Revolution. I am healthy, active in my community in various capacities, among which is flag chairman of my DAR chapter. Each of my husbands were gun collectors, hunters, Americans, and were never scrutinized for being so. Both England and Canada have established radical gun laws and confiscation of all guns. Their governments and their governments and ours are attempting to coerce the American people to follow suit. The only way we can avoid this is to fight back and never stop fighting for our right to bear arms. I am well aware of the political diversities present in the United Nations. However, we must stand firm in our support of the Constitution. We as a nation are the strength of the world at this point. We cannot be shaken from our principles or swayed by the dictators, tyrants, monarchs, and socialists of the world. We must not allow them to influence our beliefs. I am totally devoted to the preservation of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness as devised by our forefathers. I am devoted to the preservation of our Constitution as it stands. Sincerely, Sally Landerville. We don't get a lot of that kind of mail, and uh, we were pretty moved by uh, those two letters. Yeah. At this point, I'd like to introduce our executive director, Mike Holder. When I was
if you ask Barbara Shaw, uh, uh, John Kuhn's campaign manager at the time, she'll tell you that they were there to see John Kuhn. But I'm here to tell you there was 10,000 people on that Capitol steps because they were tired and fed up of getting their gun rights tromped on by Congress, and especially from congressmen that were NRA rated and then turned code, including a, a, a guy named Bob Carr and a guy named John Dingle, who made it just possible for that assault weapons ban that Brady Bill to pass. Um, at that time, like I said, there were 10,000 people on the Capitol steps. Now, John Cooney obviously did not win that election. Uh, Spencer Abraham won that election for Senate. But we sat down after that, uh, after that rally and we looked at the passion and the activism involved in all those people coming. And we said to ourselves, what are we doing wrong with all these people, with all these organizations, uh, pro-gun organizations, why are we always playing defense? Why are we always at the short end of the stick? We looked at what we were doing wrong and what we could do right. Now what we came up with was a uh, grassroots concept. First of all, we, we saw that we were always playing defense, waiting for something, some gun control bag to come up and then we play defense. <coughs> Uh, we also saw that uh, everyone, as far as pro-gun organizations, were using the CARE approach. Uh, the CARE approach basically means that you get a candidate in office and you expect him to vote pro-gun. You offer your support. But there was nobody doing the stick approach, the punishment end of it. Uh, politicians uh, were, were also playing the partisan game, which they'll try again to play with us in the CCW legislation this year. They'll tell you, well, if you don't get Republicans, and, and, and keep, keep in mind, this is, grassroots is a, a nonpartisan organization. I happen to be a Republican, so it hurts me a lot more than it hurts you to hear this. But uh, basically, they'll tell you that if you don't get pro-gun Republicans elected, you're not going to get a CCW uh, bill passed. And, and, and they've been playing that ping pong game with us as the ball for a long time. We also noticed that uh, the government regulations against political action committees limited uh, political action committee to a, a $5,000 donation uh, per candidate. Now, $5,000 buys about 30 seconds of a one-minute one ad. And uh, even though uh, organizations like the National Rifle Association that I'm, I'm proud to be a, a life member of, and I use them as an example just because they're the biggest and the best at it, um, and I'm also an NRA uh, instructor, but uh, PACs like the NRA, even though they have millions of dollars and millions of members, they're limited to $5,000 per candidate. So we came up with this concept. First of all, we're going to use the stick approach. We go after anti-gun politicians to put them out of office, not to put pro-gun politicians in office. We are a nonpartisan organization. There are only two kinds of politicians in our eyes. There's patriots and there's traitors. As a matter of fact, our first target was a uh, so-called pro-gun uh, Republican politician that was actually my Republican club, and that's Jim Ryan. So we avoided all that, and we avoided the PAC restrictions by not handling a dime of campaign funds. We do not ask you to send campaign funds to grassroots organizations so that we can fund uh, pro-gun candidates. What we do instead is to ask you to make a pledge to a anti-gun politician's race and fund their opposition. And then what we do is we have you send your pledge amount directly to the opposition of that anti-gun politician so we never, we never touch it. As Mike mentioned, in the last race against Laura Baird, even though we didn't win, we put $31,000 into her opponent's campaign. That's six times more than any, any PAC could put in. Now, does this system work? Well, it works and it doesn't work sometimes. We went after Jim Ryan back in 1996. Uh, Jim Ryan was a, a, a Republican pro-gun, so-called pro-gun candidate that came to all the events and uh, spoke at, at rallies and so on. And then once he was elected on the backs of the gun owners, he got into the State House of Representatives and sat on the Judiciary Committee. The Judiciary Committee is, is the committee that heard the CCW permit, uh, legislation, the, the first proxy bill. And basically, he shut that down along with three other Republicans. There was a 
ten to six Republican uh, domination of that committee, we wound up getting the CCW legislation flushed. Now we sat down with Jim Ryan. We explained what was going to happen to him. He said, "Do your best." So we did, and we put what was it? Uh, $10,800 into his opponent's campaign, Bob Brown, and he lost by less than 300 votes. So it does work. And then again, it doesn't work. We went after Laura Baird this last election cycle. We did all that we could do with $31,000, but we didn't win. So I'm not here to give me any guarantees. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why uh, Laura Baird uh, was not defeated. Most of it is because of uh, Michigan State University and the liberals that vote uh, in that election. So she got reelected. Uh, the only good thing is that she's term limited. Now, before I ask you to pick up the envelopes that are in front of you that we put on every table in the stands, let me tell you what we are not, so that we're just clear about this. We are not a political action committee. We're not a PAC, and we're not lobbyists. We do not sit on the laps of politicians and trade away gun rights for votes. It's not an organization that asks you to send your money in and we'll take care of things. We ask you not only to send your money in, but to also give your participation as much as you can. So that is one of the things that we are not. Uh, we don't ever play defense. We play offense all the time. 